This is the Eclipse 9800i Genesis Intelligent Automatic Flushing Station. It features a built-in amperometric chlorine analyzer for either free or combined chlorine with no reagents required. A built-in programmable logic controller, or PLC, with two micro SD cards and two standard SD adapters for retrieving data from the PLC. All data is stored in a non-volatile memory on the PLC itself. A two-inch diaphragm solenoid-operated flushing valve with site-dependent flow rates up to 80 gallons per minute. A quarter-inch solenoid-operated sampling valve. A two-inch MIP inlet. A lockable aluminum thermal insulated enclosure that is R9 rated with built-in high-efficiency fan heater four zone area thermostats that turn on the heater at 40 degrees and off at 60 degrees, self-diagnostics for proper battery charging and maintenance. The station is powered by a water turbine and two 12 EDC deep cycle batteries. The PLC monitors the power needs of the station and initiates the charging flush sequence when it senses low power. When external temperatures drop below freezing, the station maintains its internal temperature by using a high efficiency heater by flushing so as not to drain the batteries. Time to fully charge the batteries capturing the kinetic energy of the flushed water is approximately one hour. When fully charged, the batteries will provide power to the station for approximately five days before additional flushing is needed to charge. Additional analyzers can be incorporated into the station in addition to the chlorine analyzer. These include, but are not limited to, the abilities to measure for temperature, PSI, pH, conductivity, turbidity, and ORP. Water flushes into a six inch discharge pipe and is directed to a sanitary or storm sewer, a culvert, or a drainage dish as seen here by this graphic overlay. Unlike regular automatic flushing systems that operate on a daytime duration schedule, Intelligent flushing revolves around sampling. Using the PLC, the user would program the PLC's minimum residual level. Additionally, they would program the PLC's desired residual level. Once the minimal and desired levels have been set, the user would program sampling sequence times when the unit will test residual levels. Additionally, the user would program an initial blow-off time, a chlorine buffer time, which eliminates any possible errant readings, sampling duration time, the length of time the unit will sample if above the minimum level, and a fail-safe maximum total flushing time. Once this information has been inputted, the unit will automatically maintain residual program parameter levels in the following order of events. At the program sampling time, the unit will begin with the initial blow-off to remove old water and obtain a sample from the main, usually one to three minutes. Once the sample is obtained and analyzed, the station will do one of the following. If the sampled water's residual level is below the program minimum chlorine level, the unit will begin to flush all while continuing to sample. Once the sampled water's chlorine level reaches the program desired residual level, both valves shut off. Initial and final chlorine levels, time of day, and flush duration data is automatically recorded on the PLC and is available for download onto the micro SD card. If the sample water's residual level is above the program minimum chlorine level, the unit will continue to sample and check to make sure the residual doesn't drop below the minimum residual level for the sample duration time. As long as the residual level remains above the minimum level, no additional flushing occurs. Initial and final chlorine levels, time of day, and flush duration data is recorded onto the PLC and is available for download onto the micro SD card. A third scenario, if sampled water residual level is below the program minimum chlorine level, the unit will begin to flush and continue to sample. If the sample does not achieve the program desired residual level, the unit will continue to flush until the programmed maximum total flushing time has been reached. Both valves will close, ending the sampling sequence. Initial and final chlorine levels, time of day, and flush duration data is recorded onto the PLC and is available for download onto the micro SD card. Eight sampling times per day are available. The PLC is fully customizable to the end user's needs, and SCADA communication upgrades are also available. 
Part of the routine maintenance for the I-Series is occasionally recalibrating the unit's analyzer about every two to three weeks on average, depending on water quality. Replacing the probe membrane and electrolyte about every three months on average, again, depending on water quality. Cleaning the sampling valve screen filter as needed. Remove the micro SD card to manually retrieve data and information from the site. Occasionally, debris will get caught in the diaphragm inside the valve. To do maintenance on the valve, first unscrew the solenoid from the valve. Next, unscrew the bolts on the valve face. Open the valve carefully and remove any debris around the outer ring. Then remove the diaphragm and clean away any debris around the edge. Be sure also to clean any debris around the diaphragm seat inside the valve. Finally, using a common paper clip, clean out the hole in the solenoid opening. Once clean, reassemble the unit, making sure to line up the diaphragm tab with the seat.